State of Affairs is pleased to welcome Chris Sturm, who is uh, Managing Director and Policy of Policy and Water at New Jersey Future. Good to see you, Chris. Hi, Steve. Nice to be here. Tell folks what New Jersey Future is. Uh, New Jersey Future cares about the state of New Jersey and wants it to be the best place for everyone to live. And so we work on statewide issues, making sure that we're developing in the right places, in the right ways. We're investing in our infrastructure in smart ways and preserving a healthy environment. You know, uh, infrastructure, never a sexy word, you know, but an important part of the economy, important part of our quality of life. So today, while we're taping State of Affairs, we had the mayor of Newark, uh, Ros Baraka, Ros Baraka, talking about the water situation in Newark. It's a serious problem. But it isn't just Newark. It's communities all over the state, all over this nation. So let's deal with New Jersey. There are 300,000 water service lines in New Jersey. What does that mean and why does that matter? Right. So um, there are 300 pipes connecting homes to the water main under the street. 300,000. 300,000. Thank okay. you. 300,000 pipes that connect homes to the water main under the street. And they're lined with lead. And lead leaches in from those pipes into the tap water as, it as the water enters the home. What we've learned from Newark is that we can't rely on corrosion control or filters. There are short, good short-term solutions, but in the long term, we need to remove the source of the lead. We need to remove those pipes. And that is a statewide challenge. How expensive are we talking? Our best estimate is about $2 billion. Mm -hmm. $2 billion. Right, right. But mm. we think it's an investment that pays for itself in lower costs for education, for public health, even for things like incarceration. Well, hold on. What, is, what does that have to do with public education, public health, incarceration? Right. Well, lead is a really powerful neurotoxin that impairs the healthy brain development of young children. And so if children have lead poisoning, and they can get it from paint and soil as well as water, it impairs their ability to learn, lowers their IQs, and causes behavior problems. And those kinds of things cause problems down the line. So let's stay on this. I'm curious about the whole question of um, what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, it's one thing to say we need to change the pipes. But I am curious about something, and I, I don't know I'm not the only one who's thinking this. These are lead pipes. Right. What made folks think, the so-called experts, the engineers, the people who were making this happen, the policymakers, what made them think that these lead pipes wouldn't, quote, leach? I mean, I don't get that. It's really a curious thing because even Benjamin Franklin understood that lead was not good for people. People sur you know, surmised that the Roman Empire might have um, declined in part because of lead poisoning. But lead companies around the turn of the century and the early part of this, uh, the 2000s, or I'm sorry, the 1900s, used lead because it was less expensive and it was more malleable, easier to fit around corners. And I think there was a strong lobby among lead manufacturers. A lead lobby? back in the day to use lead in plumbing. Without thinking of the long-term ramifications. That's right, that's right. Now, you know, we have stronger federal regulations, but as we've learned from Flint and now Newark, they're not strong enough. It's interesting, you, you and I asked Mayor Baraka this, and please check out, if you haven't seen the show, check out our website at Steve Adubato and look up the Ros Baraka interview. When I mentioned Flint in the same sentence as Newark, the mayor made it very clear, no, no. They have a very different situation. The cause of their water problem in Flint was very different. And uh, we're way ahead of this now. They're moving forward. There's a $120 million bond issue that's gone out, borrowing the money to do this. And the mayor says he believes it will be done in the next two and a half to three years. By the way, do you think that's realistic? I think it's a great aggressive goal. And you know what? If they're a year late, so what? I, th I think Newark is doing the right thing with that kind of timeline. Okay, but go back to what the mayor said. Flint and Newark not in the same sentence, you say? I say Newark is in much better shape than Flint, but there are parallels. Go ahead. Um, I think in both places, the people who were living in those cities were surprised to find out how bad the problem was. And in both places, the solutions can't come fast enough. I mean, the latest thing that happened in Newark with the filters being found to possibly not work was really unfortunate. Um, the city... Unfortunate's a funny word because I don't know what it means. Yeah. It was worse than unfortunate. How did that not know that these filters, some of them, potentially not work? How do you not know that? You know, they were, Newark was using the filters recommended by the EPA that had been used in Flint successfully. So it was a big surprise. 
Um, we are now waiting for much more thorough test results to come out, which could be any day now, and okay. we'll have a better sense of what happens. You know, it's interesting. The issue of transparency comes up a lot. Yeah. Do you believe, your organization, New Jersey Future, does your organization believe that the city administration in Newark was, quote, transparent enough about the water situation in the city of Newark and its impact on residents? I would say that local officials across New Jersey, elected officials, can all learn a lesson from Newark, which is that the quicker you can share bad news, the better off when it comes to building trust, even if you don't have all the answers for the solution. It's a very difficult thing to do because this is a public health issue and the public can become very mm -hmm. upset and that's hard to manage. But I think what we've seen is that transparency builds trust. You're part of a task force. It is the Lead in Drinking Water Task Force. What is it, what is it and why does it matter? Sure. Um, a collaborative organization called Jersey Waterworks convened 30 people, experts from different perspectives, utilities, including the city of Newark, regulators at the state and federal level, and community and environmental advocates to come together and devise a statewide solution because we know that um, lead service lines are found across New Jersey in hundreds of communities. And so on October 10th, the task force will be releasing a comprehensive package of solutions that we think builds on what Newark is, is doing and learning. Chris, let me ask you, would you be surprised to find out that other communities throughout the state, say in the next six months to a year and beyond, that they announced bad news as you describe it? By the way, we're talking with Chris Sturm from New Jersey Future. I'm Steve Adubato coming to you from the studios of NJTV for State of Affairs. Would you be surprised to find out that other communities in the next six months, year, beyond 18 months, hey, we have a problem, because you just said, release the bad news. Would you be shocked? No, mm -mm, not at all. Ticking time bomb? My words, question, is this a ticking time bomb? Yeah, I think it is. You know, we saw um, Suez Hackensack, which provides drinking water to 57 municipalities in Bergen County, affluent suburban county, and Hudson County. Um, violating federal standards within the past year. That was a big surprise. People don't know exactly which towns that was happening in. And so there's a lot we can all do to provide better information. But that same scenario can happen and will happen in other places. It can happen anywhere. Right. The good news is once you know you have a problem, you get much more serious about fixing it. It's been really easy for folks to bury their heads in the sand because it's, it's a hard Can't thing. Can't do that anymore. No. Nope. Exactly. Uh, Chris Sturm is Managing Director of uh, Policy and Water at New Jersey Future. I want to thank you for joining us on State of Affairs. This has been uh, another edition of State of Affairs. So let's continue the conversation. Follow me on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Make sure we'll see you next week. Thank you, Chris. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Sharing Network, New Jersey Resources, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Adler Aphasia Center, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Monthly and AM 970 The Answer.